Okay, so I'm going to talk today about uh, databases and uh, but from a JavaScript perspective and specifically about HDB. So a few uh, for, for uh, like a few more words about me. I currently work at HDB. I just started, so I don't like if you will have like very detailed questions, I probably won't have all the answers. Uh, but I, I previously led um, on a, a development of a framework, Leads.js, and uh, the Hasura console team. So, and also if you want to reach out to me afterwards, you can, you can message me on Twitter, my DMs uh, are open. So firstly, uh, why uh, why HDB? So it's, a, it's 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 kind of like a new database as we'll see later. But I also want to cover why it was created. And before I do that, so I just wanted to let you know that this talk will have like a slides part and a code part. So if you will get bored after a bit of you know just seeing the slides, it will get better. I promise. So. Um, Firstly, like when uh, when the two co-founders Yuri and Alvi started thinking about uh, creating this this new database, uh, they were thinking from this perspective, like um, you know, what's wrong with SQL? Like all the problems that they they were dealing with when working with clients, uh, and one of those problems is lack of uh, orthogonality, because SQL is um, there was supposed to be something here. Oh. Okay, uh, SQL is hard to compose. That means that if you, like in, in SQL, you have two kinds of expressions. You have a table expression and a scalar expression, and you can't really mix them together. So here's an example of one and another one. And now um, here I have a, an example uh, that uh, I have one SQL query, and uh, inside I have a subquery, but now my problem is that the subquery need to be very specific in order to work inside of this external query. And, uh, and like in case it would not, it would return more rows than, um, than we, we need for it to work, we would use to use a join. So that's one problem. Another problem is uh, lack of compactness. Like uh, for those who, who are uh, familiar with SQL, you probably know that it's a large language. Uh, and actually, like as a fun fact, uh, so at the time of writing the PostgreSQL uh, implementation, there were uh, 469 keywords. And then uh, part two out of 14 uh, of the SQL uh, standard, uh, it has uh, it had. Uh, 1,732 pages. So you can imagine that's a uh, that's a lot, and that's a lot. Um, that's that's a huge surface to to uh, to handle as a developer. And then another thing was a uh, lack of consistency, because yes, we do have a standard for SQL, but then we have also different implementations. So uh, for example, we have different ways of doing the same stuff. Uh, here is like something like how to do a substring in. Uh, in, in, in one SQL implementation and, for example, in Postgres. And there are two different ways how to deal with uh, aggregation in SQL. And also, uh, a fun fact, it, uh, different databases also handle math uh, differently. So for example, something that should be, you know, some kind of a number, um, it's, it's zero in SQL Server. Okay, so now, um, like you're probably also familiar that there are you know a lot of ORMs like Prisma, Drizzle, and uh, there was uh, SQLite type ORM uh, that were popular. Uh, not not, not SQLite, SQLites. That's what I meant. Uh, that were popular uh, a while ago, and they are cool. They are cool because they feel natural in the context of modern languages because SQL, like the standard, it was created a while ago. But now we have like modern modern languages with, with a different syntax, and we tend to think differently about it. And suddenly, those ORMs they fit very nicely. So now, uh, still, like, why not an ORM? Why did they decide to create a new database instead of uh, I don't know, like uh, using an ORM or maybe even creating a new ORM? So um, there was a, a few things. It's supposed to be. Just one of those boxes on this side, but whatever. So uh, the first one is that ORMs are locked in. So that means that they are coupled with a language. So we have uh, 
we have Prisma for JavaScript and, and, and we have different ORMs for different languages. And another thing is that all the migration tooling is, uh, is maintained by the ORM maintainers, not by the database itself. So it can get a little bit out of sync if there are some, uh, some like unique stuff about the database. And then another thing is that uh, there are like uh, there are limited querying capabilities because, as I said before, SQL is a huge language, so uh, it's 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 fairly fair to say that it's not really possible to express everything with an ORM, and you know they may keep adding things and adding and adding, but you know still there might be some cases where you need something very very unique and you're not able to express it with an ORM. So the next thing is that uh, they still they uh, they take your code and they produce uh, a SQL query, and uh, those queries may not always be the most optimal, and they can come with a performance overhead. So then, why they they created this new SQL, this new database? Uh, firstly, like the, the, there were a few things that they wanted. Uh, the first one was um, a database with uh, hierarchical queries out of the box. So you can think about it as uh, as in GraphQL. Uh, so no joins, just basically you query the hierarchical data easily. Then something with an advanced data modeling and uh, with still a de great developer experience uh, with focus on, on showing uh, very precise error messages and so on. And in, in the summary, they kind of try to, to, to take the best uh, from SQL and from the ORMs. So now, uh, what are the goals? Um, the first one is that it's supposed to be composable. So this thing that was the problem with SQL that it's not uh, it doesn't compose easily. Uh, that's that's something that uh, that we want to solve with HDB. And uh, okay. And then another thing is that it's supposed to be framework agnostic. Uh, so you only have to learn this query language once, and you can use the same query language across <coughs> different languages that you use. And uh, it's also meant to do more than SQL and more than uh, GraphQL with its syntax. So, uh, so another thing that is important about HDB is that uh, the way the way it's being described is that it's the first graph relational database. So it's not a graph database. It's not like Neo4j. Uh, it's still a relational database with Postgres under the hood, uh, but it has a few uh, a few unique key, key points that uh, that that make it different than standard relational databases. And the first one is that all the objects uh, in the, that you store in the database, um, you can think uh, about objects as tables in a, you know, classic relational databases. They have a unique identity. It's not always given uh, in, in, uh, in other databases. So basically there's this, uh, this, this, this code syntax like this, uh, the, the, this ID, which is always UUID with, uh, in, it's read only, it's being generated. It's, it's something that is being applied to all the objects. You don't have to do this um, yourself. Then another thing is that objects can be connected with links. And this is actually why there's a graph in this graph relational. And now, um, now, like regarding this tables and objects that I briefly mentioned. So basically, in in tables, you like in in this relational model, you think like um, there's one table and there's a specific column that is being connected with another table, and then create can, can be another column connected with yet another table, and you can use joins to uh, merge them together. And with with this more object model, uh, you. Uh, you may think about it more like, you know, objects are connected with links with each other and they can go in both directions. And it's more, uh, it's more like GraphQL, basically. So, um, the first thing is that, uh, the first thing that is important for this uh, graph relational database is that uh, all attributes, uh, so like all the properties in the, uh, in the objects, uh, they have cardinality. 
and that specif specifies the number of values that can be assigned to the attribute. So here I have an example. Uh, I have this type movie and it has four properties. The first one, description, which is a string, uh, it means um, that it, this, this object movie, it can have um, exactly, uh, sorry, not exactly, but at most one uh, description. Uh, it's at most one because it also can be empty. And then another one is slightly different. It, there, uh, it has this required property. So it means that it's exactly one. It always has to be there. There won't be uh, more than uh, one uh, properties, titles, but it's always, uh, it always has to be on the object. And then we have multi property, uh, alternative titles. And um, here we have this cardinality that there can be multiple uh, alternative uh, titles, but it also has none of them. But if we add required multi, then it means that it has to be at least one alternative title. Uh, another thing that is important about HDB is that everything is a set. So um, basically, if you select anything from the database, it would return a set. Um, uh, if you do unions, if you merge things together, it will still be a one set, which also means that there is no such thing as null because, uh, because an empty thing is an empty set. And regarding the performance in Node.js specifically, um, since it maps, um, uh, we do have something like an ORM, we do have like a query builder, but it maps the, uh, the query language directly. So uh, thanks to that, it's, um, it has very, very low performance overhead and it deals very well with, um, with performance in general. Okay, so that was the uh, slides part, the boring part, and now I'm going to show you uh, HDB um, on a project. So I have this, um, okay, I have this uh, simple application. I did a few things before this talk so that we don't have to go through this. And, but I wanted to show you like all the required steps to use HDB. One second. So this first step is to actually install the CLI. And then uh, if you want to create a new project, um, you can run hdb project in it and it will spin up a new database for you um, then uh, if you want to apply migrations uh, there's uh, there's also migration tooling so you can do hdb migration create or hdb migration apply and um, and also if you want to do any kind of configuration you can run hdb ui i will show that in a second and also you can um, you can you can see your data and uh, you will have basically this uh, interactive console for HDB. So now, uh, what is the project about? I'm going to show you the the application um, a little bigger. Okay, so the application is just a simple thing that you can uh, log in, sign up. It's using HDB out that I will show you in a second, and you can leave comments. Uh, this. Uh, this project is uh, is written in Max, but it doesn't really matter. HDB uh, works with with any other framework as well. So, uh, firstly, like the, all the HDB stuff. So when you do this HDB project in it, it will uh, it will create a few files. The first one is HDB Tom. Um, in 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 my case, I don't have any specific configuration. It just says the version. And it also creates a DB schema folder with a default.esdl um, uh, file. And uh, basically here we have uh, our, uh, our schema model. So a few things that, have, uh, that, that I have here. Uh, is that big enough? Should I make it bigger? Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, if not, then just scream. Uh, okay, so I have this uh, type comment. 
it has a few properties. Um, I have required property text, require property author, and in this required property author, I default to global current user. Uh, I can do that because I'm using HTTP out, and um, and this default did this uh, global user is something like this. So basically, on uh, on uh, uh, I'm assigning to to, 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 to this global this um, this. Uh, this thing that selects a user from uh, from um, from an object identity. It's something that um, I think I just remember that I didn't start recording. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> you have this because one at I, least. Yeah, I just saw the uh, I saw the icon for the uh, tool. Well, so, good for us then. Yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's very oh, it's, uh, yeah, it's exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> My first demo of HDB. <laughs> and uh, no one else will see it. Okay, so basically, <laughs> um, basically, uh, I I I'm taking this from um, from all the setup that uh, the all setup that SGB did for me, and then what else? Uh, I have this public property because I want to say whether a comment should be public or not, and I default to false. Um, I can I have things like created and updated uh, and inside uh, I'm setting that created is whenever there's an insert uh, I'm, um, I'm, I, I'm I'm using the current type uh, timestamp and then with updated um, I'm using there, there's this rewrite thing in HDB so basically you can specify what should happen on certain action done to the property uh, so not to the property, to the object itself. And here I'm again on insert using the current timestamp and on update, I'm also updating the, uh, with the current timestamp. And um, another uh, interesting thing about uh, HDB is that you can uh, directly declare access policies in the schema model. So I have a few of them. The, my first one is that I want to say that an admin has full access to everything. So it can add new comments, it can delete uh, all the comments. And uh, I'm, I'm providing the name for the policy. I'm saying allow all. And I'm also saying like what's the condition. And here I'm saying that my uh, global current user, if the username is admin, then, uh, then it's all good. Then my Another policy is that um, I wanted to say that if a comment made to, to, uh, on the website is from um, uh, it's made by a person that is currently logged in, I'm also allowing them to uh, to do whatever they want, meaning currently just delete the comment. And for uh, all the other users, I'm allowing the select operation. Okay, and now the last uh, object here is the user object. Uh, so I'm specifying the identity. This is an out identity. Uh, there's a name, there's a user role, uh, which defaults to an attendee. Uh, I'm saying that a user can have uh, multiple comments. And, um, and now this is, uh, this is interesting. So basically um, how you read it is that uh, okay, so there are multiple comments, and they are uh, all the things that are being that are pointing to the user through a uh, uh, through a property author, but from an object that is a comment. So in the comment, uh, there is this author property, and basically we um, in HDB this is called a backlink and. Uh, Normally, you would be able to see that you know links go uh, one way, and this is more like the other. Like we're, we're trying to get all the things that point to the object, not uh, all the things that the object points to. And then again, the same things with the created at and updated at. Okay, so this is my uh, this is my model, and now um, how I'm using it. Actually, I'm going to 
Yeah, I was going to do something, which is um, I was thinking about starting it with a tunnel. So you can also use this application. I will make it bigger in a second and not okay. So if you want to, um, okay, if you want to, no, 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 I'm. <laughs> I won't be typing much more. So if you want to, you can scan this QR code and it should open the application. If it doesn't, then also scream because sometimes I have to restart it. It's the cloud poster uh, thing, not um, the, uh, one second. Where is it? Oh yeah, it's here. Okay. So, uh, okay, I'll give you a second. Um, I'll go back to this. In the meantime, I will also sign up um, just to have something. Um, and so I will copy this so I don't have to type again. Okay, I will log in. Okay, and I'm logged in and I can say, hi, submit this. And if you were able to open this application, uh, this 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 website, then you should be able to see it. Okay. Um, okay. Why is it keep being open? Um, yes. Uh, okay. Uh, and now I think my dev server my dev server might not handle all of you, but we'll see about that. Uh, another thing that I want to show you is that I mentioned that there is this. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm going to kill it for a second uh, because I wanted to show you a few more things. Um, I mentioned before uh, that there is a console where you can configure things, and uh, this is how it looks. Okay, so in here I have all the uh, different databases and I'm going to, to open mine and there are a few things I can uh, use the wrap to, to, to query the database and I can use the editor. There's also like a query builder so I can interactively select what I want. I can do ID created at and I can then run it. Oh, there are a bunch of comments. Uh, nice. <laughs> Uh, okay, and then uh, there's a schema viewer, um, so you can see all the things that are there. Uh, there are more of them, as you can see, more than we mentioned. Like I only mentioned the comment, the user, and yeah, I think just two of them. Uh, but all the rest is the authorization stuff, and the authorization and authentication. And that, uh, that is being added because I have this using extension out. And that was basically enough for HTTP to set up uh, all the out tables uh, for me. So back to my console. Uh, another thing is that there's a data explorer. Oh yeah, comments, <laughs> nice. And, um, and, and you, can, uh, you can search through all the objects. Uh, you can insert them through this console, and to, in order to um, in order to set up ALF, like to add some more settings, there's this ALF tab. And currently, um, currently, for example, I'm using email plus plus password uh, provider, but I could possibly add more. And uh, then also, HTTP provides a custom. Uh, of UI, so if I wanted to use that, I would enable, click that enable UI button. Okay, so that was about uh, about this HDB console. <laughs> Let me uh, try to start it again. And uh, going back to the uh, yes, uh, going back to the code. Um, I'm going to show you how I'm using HDB. And uh, yes, so I have a few endpoints. I'll make it slightly uh, smaller. Is it still visible? Yes. Okay, perfect. 
Uh, okay, so the first one that I want to show you is how I'm uh, getting, how I'm fetching all the comments from the database. So um, I'm, um, go there. yeah. So basically, I'm I'm using this use HDB. This is provided by a Next module that I'm currently using. Uh, otherwise, there's also an option to import create client from uh, the HTTP package directly and do basically the same thing. And um, then I also have generated types. Yeah. If I uh, if I open this um, this this index ts in an hqljs directory, um, you'll see a lot of things, and there are you know. A Few more files. So this is uh, this is being generated by HDB code gen. So um, there's also an HDB slash generate package that you can use to generate other either only interfaces for your objects in your database, or uh, you can also use it to generate like functions. Uh, so for example, if I have um, a query that fetches comments. And if I run this HDB generate, then it would generate a typed function, for example, fetch comments. And then the third option is to generate a query builder uh, from uh, from like by introspecting the database. And uh, uh, if you are familiar maybe with GraphQL, there is a GraphQL code generator. So it more or less uh, works in a similar way. Okay, so I have the I have this query builder, and I'm using this query builder to select the comments. So, um, so I'm firstly providing on on which uh, property I'm going to use the select, and then uh, it it's a function, and uh, first for, uh, argument is, uh, is 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 a comment because I can then reference it in the query itself. So I'm doing it, for example, to, uh, to, to, to add a new property, is current, and uh, is current is whenever this current comment that I'm fetching, whenever the author is my global current user, then I'm saying, yes, this is a current author's comment. And I'm also using this uh, this 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 comment to uh, to, to to filter uh, all the public comments, or maybe uh, even if they are hidden, but the comment author is the current author, then I also want to fetch them. And then uh, on this query, I use the run method, and uh, I provide the HTTP client. So now this is all fully typed, so I know what's the uh, what's the return time from the query. So this is uh, this is one example, and another one with uh, inserting the comments to the database is that um, here's here I have a few more uh, things. So firstly, I'm using this use HDB identity. Uh, which will tell me whether the uh, whether user is currently logged in, which means whether there's a cookie uh, in the request. This um, this is next, and um, whenever you define a, a root handler in next, this uh, there's a function, and the event is the uh, is basically the request that has um, that will have the cookie if my user is logged in. So if, it, uh, if, if, if they aren't, then I'm throwing an error. Otherwise, I'm again using this query builder to insert this, uh, this new comment. Okay, and uh, if I have something else, okay, I have also a delete, uh, uh, delete function. So um, here, uh, a very simple query that I don't need this. A simple query where I'm using filter single to uh, say which uh, comments need to be uh, removed. And yeah, another uh, another place where I'm using this um, HDB query builder is whenever I'm fetching the user information because I want to know 
uh, whether the current user is an admin or not. So um, I'm also saying what properties I want from this user object and then uh, and then uh, also like how it's supposed to filter and in my case I want uh, only the user that is uh, my current global user, my current authenticated uh, user. So uh, this is the the, the HDB code um, and another thing that I'm I will briefly show you is how I'm handling the app. So you saw that, oh nice comments. Uh, so you saw that um, when I, when I, uh, when I was signing up, I had this form. So um, how I did it was, for example, I opened the sign up. So there's this uh, component HDB app in my sign up, uh, which gives me a few things, so in React it would be a render prop, and um, I have the uh, I have for example the submit. So whenever uh, I finally decide to, I provided my information. I want to sign up. Uh, I'm using this submit uh, method provided by HDB. So all of it, all of it is uh, is from HDB. Uh, I'm not handling it myself. So, uh, okay, so that was the demo. Um, I can, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm not an admin, but I could possibly be one if, uh, uh, if I, can I open HDB, where's HDB? Yeah, here's HDB. And if I go to this uh, data viewer and if I find, user yeah i probably won't be able to find one that is me uh, yeah but i can do this from the other way and uh, that was my comment yes so if i change it to admin directly here because i'm not handling it in the application yes and now well, let's see if I guess the user correctly. If I refresh, yes, I can. <laughs> yes, I can remove the comments. Yeah, but thank you for them very much. <laughs> uh, okay, and now I will we'll just uh, log out. And I will go back to my slides. Okay, so that was it. Uh, That's the last QR code for today. I, I think it will take you to the HDB docs. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, then let me know.